Hello to all my friends who are studying in intermediate and they are watching this video. Welcome to the lectures of GTK Academy. In our previous video, we had discussed chapter motion in a straight line. I hope that you would have seen that. If you have not seen it, please do see that. Because that's a very, very important chapter. Today, we are going to start our new chapter and the name of the chapter is motion in a plane as i had already indicated earlier in my videos that henceforth for one chapter i'll be having only one video i'll be covering everything in one video however if there are some important topics in that chapter then i'll try to cover the topics separately that is the case with this chapter that is motion in a plane we are going to discuss two topics in this one is relative velocity and the other is projectiles now both these topics are extremely important and especially relative velocity uh, where people face a lot of problems that is why i have kept them in separate videos in this video i am going to discuss relative velocity and in the second video i am going to discuss projectiles now without wasting much time let's start our topic today that is the relative velocity now relative velocity it's a very very important topic no doubt uh, about that and uh, probably it has been a favorite topic for competitive exams there a lot of questions are asked on this topic many students find this topic difficult and a bit complex the reason is you deal with uh, more than two more, even more than three bodies which have their movement and that too in different directions owing to that the situation becomes a bit complex or difficult for example uh, if this is an inclined plane i tell you that uh, there is a cyclist who is going in this direction with certain velocity and then rain is falling uh, not vertically downward but but with an angle uh, with a horizontal in this direction and wind is blowing with certain velocity in this direction now if you are asked to find what is the velocity of rain which appears to cyclist in what direction does it appear to come from and what is the magnitude so there people find it bit difficult at times to you know analyze the whole thing and they find it very difficult or you can say complex but i'll tell you it's not difficult neither it's complex if you know the basics of relative velocity then it's quite easy you have to just apply the basics in this uh video i am going to discuss the concept of relative velocity from the scratch and if you are attentive enough then at the end of this video you will have good confidence on this topic and definitely i'll have some good questions also so if you you know uh, start solving the questions along with me and then practice more then you will have a very good command on this topic as i have indicated in my previous videos that normally uh, in my lectures uh, which i am posting on uh, youtube i use lot of animations lot of uh, you know diagrams prepared diagrams or figures since i want to present the whole thing in a very interesting easy 
manner so that you are able to understand them easily. Rather than me drawing the figures, which takes a lot of time. So, in order to save the time and present it before you in an easy, lucid, and an interesting manner, I use these, you know, uh, techniques, or you can say I leverage this technology. Now, let's start our topic, which is relative velocity. Now, suppose there are two bodies. A and B, and they are moving, say like this. A is moving in this direction with a speed uh, VA, and B is moving in this direction with a speed VB. Now, if I ask you the velocity of object A relative to another object B, what does that mean? That means, uh, how does A appear to move to B? B? If B is observing A, B is moving also and at the same time, he is observing A. Or say, B is a uh, uh, car and somebody is sitting in this car, which is going with velocity VB and he is uh, observing the movement of A. So as per him, how will A be moving in which direction and with what velocity? Velocity definitely, V is the velocity of A. But what, with what velocity does he appear to move to B or any person, any observer with B? That is called V A B. That means velocity of A relative to B. Here B is observer. So this is the way of writing V A B, velocity of A relative to B. So, it is denoted by VAB. Just remember this because that is going to be used extensively here. Now, question is we discussed how A appears to move to B, but how do we you know, find that? How do we calculate this relative velocity? This is the relative velocity. Velocity of A relative to P. Now let's consider two very, very simple cases. And then we will move ahead to more, you know, you can say complex kind of uh, cases. Case 1. On this road, we have a car A, which is going in this direction at 40 kilometers per hour. And there is another car B which is coming on the same track with a speed of 50 km per hour. Anyway, this is just a hypothetical situation. <laughs> you won't find these kind of uh, situation in uh, real life because they are going to collide, uh, which we never want it to happen. Now, if I ask you velocity of B relative to A, relative to A or somebody sitting in this car A, how will B appear to move to him? If I ask you, immediately you will tell he will appear to move at a very fast pace, at a, at a very high velocity, you know, uh, more than what is the velocity of B. And uh, most of the people will tell that he will appear to move with a velocity of 50 plus 40 which comes to 90 km per hour. And that's right. That's right. He will uh, appear to move at a very fast, fast pace. Case 2. A is going in the same direction, whereas B is now moving 
with 50 km per hour in the same direction. Now, if I ask you, now what will be the velocity of B relative to A? Now, uh, B will uh, appear to move at 50 minus 40, which is 10 km per hour. Now, since A is already moving with 40 and B with 50, so you have to subtract 40 from 50 and you will get the relative uh, speed or velocity, whatever you call, because it's in the straight line, same line, straight line. Now, since the two discussed cases were in the same direction, hence we added and subtracted them algebraically. However, as a general rule, this is done vectorially because velocity is a vector. Now, let's do it vectorially. Now, let's see what we have done here. We say that velocity of B relative to A is equal to 50 plus 40, right, which is equal to 90 kilometer per hour. Now, actual velocity of B is 50 kilometer per hour. And uh, we have we told that it is 90. So how did we get this 90? Actually, what we had done, we have added the reverse of velocity of A with this. That is, we have reversed the velocity of A and added to that. So if you reverse the velocity, this becomes because A's velocity is 40 in this direction. We have reversed it, so 40 in this direction, kilometer per hour. Now, if you club the both, this will become 90 kilometer per hour. That means what we had done, we had added, we had taken the velocity of B. And we have added the reverse of A, that is minus velocity of A to that, which becomes velocity of B minus velocity of A. And that is how we got this 90. I hope I am clear. Here I am using some uh, concepts which I discussed in the chapter of vectors. I hope that you would have gone through that. If you have not gone through that, please go through it first and then try to understand this topic. Hence, we write VBA is equal to VB minus VA. So, our first and the last and the only formula for relative velocity is velocity of B relative to A is equal to VB minus VA, not arithmetically, but vectorially we have to subtract A from B. Now, let us apply this in the second case. So, here in this case, we found out the velocity of B relative to A as 50 minus 40 which is equal to 10 kilometer per hour. Now, let us use the formula for this, which we discussed in the previous slide. VBA is equal to VB minus VA. Now, what is VB? 50 in this direction. And what is minus VA? Since direction of VA is this 40 in this direction, so VA is minus VA is 40 in this direction. 
Now the resultant of both this will be 10 kilometer per hour in this direction. So we write VB minus VA. So if V A B is the velocity of A relative to B, then V A B is equal to V A minus V B. So you have to remember this formula, which is the only formula which will be used to solve most of the questions. So here we have to you know subtract one vector from other. In our previous slide, we had both of them in the straight line, be it VA or VB. But if we don't have them in the straight line, then what to do? I hope that uh, you all are clear with uh, vector addition. Anyway, I'll touch on that. However, I've discussed that in detail in my video on scalars and vector. If you have not seen it, please do see that. Now, suppose we have a vector like this and we have your b vector like this. Now, if you have to add a and b, what do you do? You take uh, any of the vector first, say a first, and then you shift b parallel to itself, bring it here, and in such a manner that its tail coincide with the head of a. So now join this, and this is a plus b vector. Now, here what we are doing, we are actually adding v vector and minus v b vector. So, how do you do that? Suppose this is your v a and this is your v b. Take v a, reverse v b. The reverse will be in other direction and then you get this red one which is VA minus VB. That is how we do it vectorially. Now let us consider few real life examples in the coming slide. Suppose this is a train which is moving in this direction. Say if a person is sitting here on the window how will the tree appear to him? If I ask you this question, everybody of you will tell that the tree will appear to move in opposite direction. Suppose the train is moving uh, with a speed, uh, whatever is the speed, the same will be the speed of this person. Say it is VP. That is why I have denoted instead of VT, I have denoted VP, the speed of the person. Because he is traveling inside the train. Now, tree will appear to move in this direction, and that will be the velocity of tree relative to person. Right? How the tree appears to move, although tree is not moving. The second example suppose these are two trains A and B which are on parallel tracks, train A is going with a speed VA in this direction and train B with VB in this direction. Now, how will the train B appear to move to a person sitting in this train? It will move at a very uh, fast pace because that you have experienced. You all would have traveled in trains and you would have seen that. That means uh, it will uh, appear to move in the same direction but with a high speed. That means if this arrow represents the speed of the train, actual uh, speed of the train, the speed which, with which it appears to A, that is V, uh, B A, this is going to be bigger than this arrow. That means with a higher speed. Suppose you are traveling in a car and it is moving uh, with a velocity Vc in this direction and rail is falling vertically uh, with a uh, speed Vr. 
although it's not necessary that it will it should follow it should fall vertically but this is just an example say if it is falling falling vertically downwards how would it appear to the person sitting inside car it will not appear to be falling vertically instead of that it will appear to fall like this green arrows with an angle with horizontal again that angle will depend upon the speed of the car which we will discuss later so this will be vrc that is velocity of train relative to car or an observer in car now suppose this is a balloon which is moving upwards with a speed vp means Uh, that is the speed of this person vp otherwise we would have written vb uh, as the speed of balloon but uh, we are telling vp because he is an observer here and a crane is flying in sky in this direction with the speed of vc now my question is how will the crane flying in the horizontal direction appear to person sending vertically upwards how will this screen appear to this person what will be the direction uh, of his uh, velocity and what will be the magnitude of the velocity with which crane will appear to this person the next suppose jet is uh, jet is flying the jet a is uh, going in this direction uh, with a speed of va and jet b flying in this direction with a speed vb so again my question is how will the jet b this jet appear to the pilot of jet a if they are moving in the same plane or this is a spacecraft space craft a which is going with a, a speed va in this direction and another space craft space ship v b in this direction now again my question is how will the space ship b appear to move to an astronaut who is in space ship a if both the space ships are moving in the same plane now let's get the answer to whatever we have discussed the examples real life examples and the three uh, which were you know given as questions by using the concept of a relative velocity so what is the concept of relative velocity the concept is velocity of b relative to a is vb minus va what is the velocity of v relative to person that will be now use this equation of relative velocity vt vector minus vp vector now vt vector is zero because tree is stationary so zero minus vp that is what is minus vp vp is in this direction minus vp is going to be in this is minus vp so this is your minus vp so the tree will appear to move with a velocity minus vp in this direction because vtp is equal to minus vp okay. the second one velocity of b relative to a is equal to vb minus va now this is your vb now reverse va and add to this so this becomes vba so this train b will appear to be moving 
with a speed VBA in the same direction as that of B. However, you can see the magnitude of the velocity has increased because size of green arrow is more than this original uh, velocity of uh, V. Third one. Now, velocity of rain relative to car is equal to velocity of rain minus velocity of car. Now, draw velocity of rain, reverse velocity of car, and add to that. So, this is VRC. This is the velocity with which rain will appear to the person sitting inside the car, like this, VRC. Now here, velocity of rain relative to person is equal to velocity of crane minus velocity of person. This is your velocity of crane. And reverse the velocity of person and add to that this one. So, this is your VCP, velocity of crane relative to person. So, that means the crane will appear to move in this direction with this velocity. Now, just see the size of the green vector is bigger than this. So, the direction of crane has changed and even the magnitude of its velocity has changed. It appears to be moving faster. In this case, velocity of B relative to A is equal to VB minus VA. Now, this is your VB. Reverse VA and add to that minus VA. So, this is VBA, velocity of B relative to A. So, just shift this VBA vector here to show. So, get B will appear to be moving in this direction with a much higher velocity, you can say. Just see the size of the red one and this black one. Black one is the actual speed of VB and this is the relative speed, red one. See. Now, in this problem, velocity of B relative to A is equal to velocity of B minus velocity of A. So, this is your velocity of B. Reverse the velocity of A and add to that. So, this is your VBA, velocity of B relative to A. That means this is the velocity with which the spacecraft B will appear to move to an astronaut in A. Now, here also you can see this arrow represents the actual velocity of spacecraft B. But here it is appears to be moving with a much higher velocity and in a different direction. So, these arrows which I have depicted here may not be accurate, but again, uh, just to give you some idea. So, that was all uh, related to relative velocity. Again, we have one or two very important concepts here which I am going to discuss one by one. One concept is uh, we know that VAB is the velocity of A relative to B and VAB is equal to VA minus VB. The concept is this implies that observer is made stationary. Now, I have already told who is the observer here. This one is the observer because the velocity of A relative to B. So, B is the observer. So observer